presence of the Lord. Well, I am visiting this this day. Uh, but come again, and uh, you pray for me. <laughs> pray for me this morning to be strengthened with might and power from on high. Hallelujah. Well, I want to take a familiar passage of Scripture, which you are very familiar with. <laughs> and I want to talk about the love of God. To love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And how so often it just takes a split second for us to lose sight of the love of God. We get so involved in the things of this world that it kind of takes the shine of the, of the covering of the love of God off of us and we begin to function <clears throat> uh, according to the world. But let's read the scripture, 1 John 2.15. And as you're preparing to read, um, Focusing in on the, the Holy Spirit that lives within us and prepares us to uh, to receive the Word of God as it is the truth of God. So, First John, chapter two, verse fifteen, and we have here, as you well know, more than I. A commandment from God. Love not the world. And as one good friend of mine said, slow down just a little bit. We don't need to go on to the rest of it without taking the full impact of what the scripture says. Love not the world. Now it's interesting that when you look up the word love there, it's agapio, and it's a verb. And he's seeking to get us to understand the depths of this love, loving not the world, the intensity of this love. Love not the world, love not uh, to put your all in all in loving the world. Then he says, neither the things that are in the world. So it's a description of world, of this kind of world. Uh, love not the world, the word, word there, world comes from the word cosmos, and it speaks of a system, a way of doing things, a way of thinking. And so he tells us, he commands us, not to love this world system. Not to love 
the way that the world does things. <clears throat> Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love with intensity the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The love, so you can't love the world, love the things of the world, the way that they think, the way that they do things, and love the Father at the same time. <clears throat> It's impossible. Now, we won't be here long. <laughs> I just wanted to put a couple of thoughts on your mind. That oftentimes we don't really think about the world as a system, as a way of living. The world is going on every day and people are thinking thoughts and, and doing things mm -hmm. because it's the way of the world. Mm -hmm. And he tells us not to love with intensity, with action, mm -hmm. the way of the world. Mm -hmm. The cosmos, the man sent it world cannot love this world system and love God at the same time. And then he goes on in verse 16. For all that is in the world, in this world system, in the way of doing things, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of this world. All right. Now that, that word lust uh, speaks of desire. So you could, some translation actually says the desire of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the pride of pride. Things, things, taking pride in things that you own. So you have to really think about what is of the world. Satan will deceive us in our thoughts and have us to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think when it relates to things, cars, clothes. Isn't it something that, that you can change how you feel and how you think by just simply changing your clothes. It sometimes makes us for who we are, who we think we are. That's worldly. Or the kind of car we drive, we take a certain amount of pride. That word lust comes from a word, uh, well, I sometimes have trouble pronouncing it, <laughs> epithemia. It, it, it refers to intense desires. Intense desires of the flesh, intense desires of the eyes, and intensity that you receive from possessions. We have to be very, very careful about possessing things. Because we can take pride in those things. Look back at uh, Luke twenty-two fifteen, And the same word, just to give you a, uh, a glimpse of uh, the intensity of the desire of the flesh. 
This word is used three times, three other times, but they're used. Uh, let's see, Luke 22, 15. You have to be patient with me because I'm, I'm on, on an electronic device. <laughs> Uh, Luke 22, 15. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Can you, you imagine the desire that Jesus is is showing us here. But this is the same word <laughs> that's used here. Desire of the flesh. It's intense beyond imagination. Look at Philippians uh, 1.23. Philippians 1.23. For I am in a straight betwixt to having a desire mm -hmm. to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. This desire was above everything else. This ingrained. <coughs> now look at uh, 1 Thessalonians 2.17. Two seventeen. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, mm -hmm. endeavoreth the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Great desire. So you see. When the scripture speaks of the desire of the flesh, it's, it's, it's the most innate thing within us. It's very, very, very intense. But he says that, but that's all this world is full of. The desire of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life. Look back with me at, uh, and we're going to be wrapping up, Genesis 3, 8, just to give you some more visual of this world. And, of course, we have the backdrop of, of the Garden of Eden, of Adam and Eve as we all know it, know that story. <laughs> but we can learn so much from uh, the beginning. Amen. And they heard the voice of the Lord, God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God how did he hide himself amongst the trees of the garden? Amongst the things of the world. The things that God created. He created all the things that we have. So it's nothing wrong with things, but it's the relationship that we develop between the things. We have to be ever so mindful to keep the relationship with things clear that they're to be used by God and by us. But we're not to develop a lust for the things of this world Amen. and the system and how they, how 
the Satan does these. So I just want you to uh, think about the love of God and the love of this world. It says that you cannot love this world and love God at the same time. It's impossible. So we constantly have to be aware. Turn with me to uh, Romans chapter 12. I know you know where I'm going. <laughs> Chapter 2, verse 2. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We have a great Savior. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12. Verse 2, and be not conformed. Slow it down there. And be not conformed to be shaped, be molded to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, one of the things we have to be aware of and constantly before our, our eyes, our thinking, is being conformed to this world. It's important that we uh, practice daily, moment by moment, renewing our minds because the only place that we can get uh, an understanding of worldliness versus transforming is from the word of God. And so uh, when we spend too long <laughs> participating in this world system and not in the word of God, we most easily find ourselves becoming worldly. Where we are loving the things of this world more than we're loving God. So I invite you saints today to uh, focus more on loving God and not loving this world. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.